May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dear friends of Christ, back in ancient times, cities were typically surrounded by big, sturdy walls to protect them. And to add to the protection that those walls would provide, there would always be watchmen that were placed on top of those walls that would look out into the distance and watch for impending danger. As these watchmen would scan the horizon, they would be able to see well in advance if there appeared to be army troops coming their way to attack the city or any other type of danger that might come along. And so these watchmen, as they faithfully did their duty, they would sound the alarm. They would blast a trumpet, a ram's horn, and that would notify everybody in the city that they needed to prepare themselves to be safe. The, the people that were in the city and the people that maybe lived outside of the city walls, they would take refuge within the city walls. The soldiers of that city would get to their posts on the walls so that they could defend the city. And so a watchman's duty was important because if they wanted a chance of being saved from the approaching enemy armies, well, they needed to know the danger that was being posed to them. And so if, if the, uh, the watchman faithfully did his duty, and if the soldiers were prepared to fight off whatever troops might be marching their way, the city could be saved. And I would also imagine that the watchmen could find a great deal of satisfaction in the fact that they had a part in the salvation of their city. Today in God's word, God calls upon us to be faithful watchmen to our fellow citizens in this world. Not that God calls on us to get up on some sort of a watchtower and scan the horizon for potential attackers, but rather God calls upon us to be watchmen in a spiritual sense. As, excuse me, as, as sin poses a very serious eternal threat to people's souls, God wants us to faithfully sound the alarm of his word so that people would wake up to the danger that sin poses to us. And then in the event that people do prepare themselves properly as they hear that warning cry, hear that alarm, well, then we can also rejoice and take great pleasure in the fact that God in His grace uses people like you and me to take a very special part in the salvation of fellow sinners just like you and me. The Ezekiel prophet had a rather unique and a, a rather difficult ministry that he was called to called into his prophetic office a couple of years before the nation of Israel was taken captive into Babylon, into Babylon, God reiterated to Ezekiel the prophet several times that his main focus as a prophet was to be a faithful watchman for the people of Israel. What do I mean by that? Well, to understand what, what that entailed, you have to understand what the condition of the Israelite people was at that time. The Israelite people, by and large, had rejected the true God at the time that Ezekiel served as a prophet. Many of them had given themselves over to idolatry. They failed to uphold the laws of God. Many of the Israelites just simply caused there to be a picture of just rebellion and wickedness filling the nation of God's very own chosen people. And so, uh, or I should say, and in fact, it was because of that very wickedness and rebellion that the people landed up, in, or landed in, in their captivity in Babylon in the first place because God was punishing them by doing this. God was pronouncing his judgment on them by doing this. And so a good portion of Ezekiel's ministry was spent in the nation of Babylon along with the exiles from Israel. And one of his main tasks was to proclaim to the people that it was their sin and it was their wickedness, it was their rebellion against God that landed them there in the first place. And that if there was any hope for salvation, if there was any hope to get back in a right relationship with the true God, these people, these Israelites, needed to repent and amend their wicked ways. And so, though it was a difficult task, sounding the alarm of God's word, proclaiming to the people the, the harsh judgment that God was declaring to them over their wickedness, it was what Ezekiel needed to do in order to be a faithful watchman for the people. 
even though there, were certain, there, there would certainly be times where people didn't want to hear it, and people even opposed Ezekiel to his face, yet in love for God and love for his fellow Israelites, Ezekiel faithfully, faithfully carried out his duty as a watchman. As a spiritually mature individual, Ezekiel clearly recognized that if his people continued to walk according to their own ways, rather than to walk according to the ways of the Lord, they would be subjecting themselves to the ultimate danger of God's eternal punishment in hell. And therefore, he faithfully took up this task of warning the people with the prayerful hope that they would hear this alarm, hear this warning cry, and that they would repent and turn to the Lord and therefore be saved. That prayerful hope, that hope for their salvation, is ultimately what drove Ezekiel and, and motivated him to carry out this difficult and challenging ministry that God had given him to carry out, this ministry of acting as a faithful watchman to the people. It wasn't that Ezekiel was motivated by, you know, he, his motivation wasn't that he got to point a self-righteous finger at the other people and feel good about himself. His motivation wasn't that he derived some sort of sick, twisted pleasure out of proclaiming God's judgment on others while he sat back and laughed at them all. No, his motivation was a true and deep love for the salvation of sinners, a desire for the salvation of sinners. And in fact, this wasn't just Ezekiel's desire alone. This, of course, was God's own desire. The very God who appointed Ezekiel to serve as watchman with that very intention in mind. And so ultimately, this passage of Scripture highlights the incredible, the extreme mercy and love of our gracious God. Is God serious about his punishment against sin? Absolutely. It, does it anger God when people rebel against him? You better believe it does. But yet, at the very same time, God's, God's own heart in proclaiming his judgment on sin, God's own heart in warning people of his severe judgment on those who refuse to repent and turn in for salvation, is precisely because he desires us to turn and be saved. He doesn't want us to face his condemning judgment. And he proclaims that beautiful, amazing truth in this section from Ezekiel today as he says, As surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. So again, it was God's own gracious desire ultimately that motivated Ezekiel. While his duty as a faithful prophet and, and watchman was a difficult ministry to carry out, yet it was a great privilege that the Lord would, in fact, call him to do this and, and have a part in this ministry. Because just like the Lord desired, again, Ezekiel, the last thing he wanted was for his fellow Israelites, including some of his own family members, no doubt, to face God's eternal judgment because of impenitent sin. Rather, he very much desired to see every last one of them saved. And what great pleasure it would give him then when, through his faithful service as a watchman, sounding the alarm to the people, that he would see people repent and be saved. Even if it was just one individual at a time, Ezekiel could take great pleasure in the fact that people turned from their wickedness and sought refuge in the Lord. Still today, the heart of this passage rings just as true as ever. Still today, God calls upon every faithful believer to be a watchman for the people of this world. Certainly on the one hand, you know, he, he calls pastors to be watchmen in a very specific type of way, a very unique type of way I think most Christians would recognize. Uh, after all, a pastor, by, simply by virtue of his position, has a very unique and distinct opportunity to teach people, to lead people to sound that alarm over sin and also to build up people with the proclamation of God's mercy and his forgiveness to those who repent. But yet, even though pastors have a unique role in doing this, yet God calls really on each and every individual believer to be a watchman for your fellow citizens of this world as well. And just like in Ezekiel's case, you can be 100% assured that God himself proclaims his blessing as you carry this, as you take up this task, 
as you serve as a faithful watchman, because it's God himself who gives this commissioning to you. Now, before we talk about how you can be a faithful watchman to other people, there's something else that, that first needs to be recognized, and that's that we need, uh, that, that each of us, first of all, needs to be, in a sense, a watchman to ourselves. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean that we need to first be able to apply God's word to our own hearts before we seek to apply it to other people's hearts. We need to first take the plank out of our own eye, as Jesus says, before we seek to take the speck out of another person's eye. And so we spend time in God's word so that we can hear God's warning cry to us, so that we ourselves can drink in that message about the seriousness of our own sins and our own need to repent. We take to heart the danger that, that God proclaims about his judgment on, on wickedness. And we confess to God that we ourselves have often strayed into wickedness and rebellion against him. And that we very much need and desire his saving mercy and healing. We listen to God's call to humble ourselves before him and before other people. Recognizing that even just the, the sinful thoughts and attitudes that circulate within our hearts are enough to merit us condemnation for eternity. And along with that, in being alerted to those things and paying attention to that warning cry from God, we also then put our trust in God and commend ourselves to His mercy, rejoicing in the truth that He doesn't desire our condemnation either, just like He reminded Ezekiel that He doesn't desire the death of the wicked. We can say the same about ourselves, that God did not desire and does not desire our condemnation but rather that we would be all saved through humble, repentant faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. Once we've made and continue to make those types of preparations in our heart, then we truly are prepared to serve as faithful watchmen to others as well. And therefore, in doing so, God, uh, God's urging to you as a faithful watchman, God's urging to me as a faithful watchman, is first of all this, Again, not to be afraid to sound the alarm. You know, uh, I know sometimes, or oftentimes, I guess I could even say, we as, as believers who are called to do this, and pastors are included in this, we oftentimes feel unworthy. We feel uh, un, unprepared. We feel inadequate to sound the alarm about sin to other people. If we recognize our own sinfulness, which we should be doing, it sometimes causes us to feel like, well, who am I to sound the alarm about sin to other people than if I myself am a sinner? You know, or there, there, uh, so there's times where we feel the ac fear the accus accusations of other people that they might say back to us, well, who are you to judge me? And those are the types of things that make us afraid to sound that alarm of God's word, both because we feel inadequate or because we're afraid of the opposition, the pushback from other people in doing this. But in those times of feeling inadequate, and in, in those times of being afraid of the pushback you might receive, remember simply who it is that commissioned you, and that he stands beside you. It was none other than the very Lord himself who commissioned Ezekiel for his tough and challenging ministry. When we address others about certain sins, the fact that we're sinful too, doesn't need to hinder us. When you express concern to someone about open impenitence over sins that you might notice, it's really not you who's judging them. You're simply sharing with them, affirming for them what God's own word says, and you, in your love for them, are trying to warn them of the danger that they themselves are putting themselves in. Yes, we do have to watch out for pharisaical pride taking root in our hearts when, when we do this duty of, of serving as faithful watchmen and sounding the alarm to other people. But the fact of the matter remains, we don't have to be afraid to sound the alarm of God's word to others because God himself has commissioned us to do this and he himself stands beside us as we do so. And that leads to the other major thing, then, that God urges us in, the, in regard to uh, this whole issue of being faithful watchmen to others. And again, it's very much just like what Ezekiel was motivated by. And that is to take pleasure in the salvation of sinners. 
Just like Ezekiel dearly desired the salvation of his fellow Israelites and did not want to see them face God's judgment, so also God calls on us to look at things from that same perspective. Recognize the extreme love that, that you can demonstrate to others by acting as a watchman of God to them, even though it might be difficult to do at times. Hear God's word that even he himself, again, like he says, takes no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Take pleasure in the fact that God even desired you in his grace to hear his warning cry about sin. Repent of those sins and cause you to believe in him and find refuge in him as your savior. That God desired your salvation through the blood of Jesus. And let that truth that God did this for you open up to you a whole new world of appreciation in your heart for God's mercy so that you do also thoroughly rejoice in the salvation of every sin that comes to repentance through God's warning cry and the message of the gospel in Jesus Christ. So therefore, with all that in mind, be a faithful watchman, each and every one of you, because people's eternity is ultimately at stake. Yes, it is a high calling from God, and it's not always an easy task to carry out. But, for the reasons we talked about, first of all, don't be afraid to sound the alarm. Because people need to hear that warning cry about the danger that sin poses to them. And then, in connection with that as, as well, be motivated by the simple pleasure that you gain from the salvation of fellow sinners like you and me. That is God's own desire, that all would come to repentant and saving faith in Him as the Savior. And when you recognize God's grace and how He brought you to repentant faith, again, through the powerful message of His Word, what an awesome thing it is, what a motivating thing it is, and what pleasure it gives us then in seeing fellow sinners like you and me repent and be saved by our gracious Lord. Amen.